Hey everybody, it's Chris and Jamie from Steeda, and today we're gonna to be talking about sway bar accessories. There are a lot of different combinations of which bushings, sway bar mounts, brackets, end links, things to go along with your sway bar to completely change the way your Mustang rides. So, Jamie, let's start off with sway bar mounts and the bushings involved. Uh, obviously, this is a stock one, correct? That's stock rear bar uh, bushing and bracket. It's a simple stamp sheet metal bracket with a rubber bushing with poly reinforcement. It's good bushing, but once you start upping your sway bar to an aftermarket, then you're gonna to wanna to look into the urethane bushings to give you a, a, a higher durometer bushing and it's less likely to deform when the sway bar is moving. So then what would this be? That is a uh, polyurethane that is uh, basically the industry standard uh, sway bar mount for most aftermarket sway bars. Uh, it's a simple stamped metal bracket with a polyurethane bushing. And this obviously is perfectly sufficient for you know lighter vehicles like the older Focuses we carry parts for and things like that, correct? Yeah, it's still it's a it's a a good bushing and bracket. As you get more involved with what you're doing with your car, autocross, track days, drag race, then you're going to want to step up your uh, the strength of your bushings and brackets. Well, it makes sense when you're talking about old Focuses being significantly lighter than an S550 Mustang. You're going to want a heavier duty bushing bracket, and the bar rate's obviously going to be higher to compensate too. Oh yeah, it, it, the more bar rate you have, the more load you're putting on your bushings and brackets. That's why we developed our heavy duty brackets. They're about twice as thick as the, the industry standard brackets. Uh, the bushings are larger, uh, harder durometer bushings. Uh, you're just gonna have a better life out of your bushings and brackets that way. It's gonna be a more consistent uh, chassis feel. You're not gonna have uh, some of the issues that you have with the, th the smaller bushings and our ever popular heavy duty bracket with the bushing as well. We use this on pretty much all of our S550 kits, correct? Uh, that's pretty much standard on all of our S550, uh, Explore, Mach-E. Awesome. We use that, that bracket bushing setup on uh, most of the newer bars that we do. Uh, it's just gonna give you a much better life out of your bushings. And we do use these on track as well. Oh yeah, we use those on track. We use them on the uh, we use them on our number twenty uh, road race car down in Pompano, our red HPDE car, and we use them on our EcoBoost. And honestly, this is pretty much sufficient ninety nine point nine percent of the time on track. But if you want to take absolutely no prisoners, let's talk about the billet mount. The billet aluminum sway bar bracket is going to be by far the strongest, best supporting sway bar bracket that you can buy. It, com it almost completely encases the uh, sway bar bushing, so it eliminates a lot of the deformation that you get from the bushing under heavy loads. The bracket's made out of uh, aircraft quality aluminum. It's not gonna move. And these are developed in-house and engineered and manufactured in-house, correct? Yes. Awesome, so in terms of sway bar maintenance, how often should we be looking at these bushings and ensuring that there's no dirt, grime, et cetera, in there and regreasing. It really depends on how much you drive your car and how you use your car. If it's a track car, your maintenance is gonna be a little bit more routine than the guy that just drives his car to shows or you know just drives it on the weekends. You're gonna have yours apart more, grease it more, but a normal street-driven car, bushings need to be cleaned and greased about once a year. And to be clear, the only part that needs to be greased is the inside where the sway bar actually contacts the bushing. You do not need to grease the outside. I'm talking from experience here. <laughs> that, just add, that just adds to the mess with the silicone grease. <laughs> um, so moving on from sway bar mounts and bushings, let's talk about the offset brackets. Why would somebody want to get these offset rear brackets? It helps improve your rear sway bar geometry. We developed these for the S550. They work just as well for a factory sway bar as they do any of our sway bars or most of the aftermarket sway bars. It just helps to move the sway bar back towards the rear of the car. It straightens up the end link, puts it more in a vertical position, and helps to get more clearance between different chassis suspension components and the end link so that you can adjust them a little bit easier. And then speaking of end links, we have a factory S550 end link here and obviously our adjustable Steeda end link. At what point would somebody want to jump to those adjustable end links? 
Well, it really depends, on, again, on what you're doing with your car and how you have your car set up. If you have an extremely low ride height, then adjustable sway bar end links are something you definitely need to have. It helps to get your sway bar back to the correct position, then get the geometry back where it needs to be so your sway bar works as it was designed. Uh, in competition, track cars, it makes a big difference in uh, how repeatable and consistent your car is for handling because the end links aren't gonna move around as much. They're not gonna try to bend and deflect under load. They're greasable and it helps to make for a smoother rotation of the sway bar. It takes away bind. Uh, you do not need to add bind to your sway bar because it's just gonna make the car more inconsistent. And speaking in most cases, uh, a sway bar that is level with the ground is what we're aiming for, correct? Yes, you want the sway bar to be basically parallel with the ground and you want it to be parallel through your sway bar bushings where it's rotating in a straight line so it's not binding as it tries to rotate. One thing you probably will notice the difference between stock versus our end link is that these have a Zerk fitting on there, which means they are a serviceable item. They do need to be greased. Jamie, we say it all the time here, do not over grease the end links. One to two <laughs> pumps of grease and each grease fitting is plenty. Don't try to fill them up till you start seeing grease come out. Uh, just put a couple shots of grease in there and they're fine. And just remember when you're doing your sway bar end link maintenance, just to make sure that you check the jam nuts, make sure they're tight, the other hardware is tight. Uh, loose end links are one of the biggest source of noises that we have commonly asked about. Mm -hmm, for sure. And another thing to mention is when you are adjusting those end links between each hole in the adjustable sway bar, it's possible that the end link length may need to change to compensate for that different position on the bar, right, Jamie? Yeah, if you're going from one extreme to the other on your sway bar, it's possible you're gonna to have to lengthen it or shorten it. Makes complete sense. And in terms of adjusting your end links, obviously a great starting point is stock length, and then you can go from there. So take your factory end link, line it up against your Stita adjustable end link, measure everything out and make sure everything is lined up. From there, once it's installed on the car, you'll be able to visually see where that adjustable end link places the bar. If it's on the same plane as the ground, you're good to go, or you can move the bar up and down by adjusting those end links to match on either side. And adjusting the end link is as simple as breaking the jam nuts loose and turning the center to either make it longer or shorter. If you have any questions, please let us know. There's a lot to digest here, but we do offer these different bushing options, different mount options based on your particular application, and we group them in these kits, again, based on the car weight, the bar rate, and everything else involved. If you have any questions about sway bar mounts, the offset brackets, our adjustable end links, or anything in between, please let us know. We're happy to help. Hit that like and subscribe button, the notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.